Hi everyone, in this week's uh, Monday Morning Dispatch video we are considering the extent to which an employer can continue with a disciplinary process even if the employee has resigned and indeed left the organisation. Now the starting point to consider is that there is absolutely no obligation on an ex-employee to attend an internal disciplinary hearing. They are not subject to the control of policies and procedures of the business anymore and if they decline to attend uh, there is nothing that the business can do to compel them uh, to come to that hearing. Uh, however, there are a couple of circumstances where it may still be in the employer's interests to pursue that disciplinary case. Uh, firstly, in the context of regulated environments, so that may be healthcare, social care, uh, any business really that has uh, an obligation to make regulatory referrals in the event of a guilty verdict they may wish to continue with the disciplinary hearing and in those circumstances it's absolutely essential that the employee is made aware that if the proceedings do continue and a finding is made a referral may ultimately be made to the um, relevant uh, regulator um, if the employee refuses to attend it's within the employer's gift to proceed and they could even invite any written representations before uh, any decision is made there is also a potential benefit in terms of a constructive dismissal claim. So if an employee, for example, resigned citing a, a breakdown in trust and confidence that they allege the employer is at fault for uh, and are considering bringing a claim, it may sometimes come to the attention of the employer that there is an outstanding disciplinary case. Often an employee actually resigns once those allegations have been put to the, uh, to the employee and they try and claim constructive dismissal. I think um, tactically and in the context of the defence of a constructive dismissal claim, it is often helpful to um, conclude a disciplinary case because as part of the defence, even if the employer is going to lose the argument on the constructive dismissal, the second bite of the cherry is that the employer would have been in a position to dismiss fairly for conduct reasons uh, in any event and that can really limit compensation and also um, act tactically in dissuading the employee from uh, from bringing a claim. Um, the other question linked to this is whether or not any uh, finding of gross misconduct, for example, uh, in a hearing after the employee has left can be disclosed in a reference. Um, that's a difficult one to answer. There is a, a duty to uh, take reasonable care to ensure that the information is true, accurate, fair and not misleading. And the difficulty is if a finding has been made that an employee um, has not been a party to in, in terms of defending themselves, there is an argument that that um, judgment in a reference could be um, unfair uh, or even untrue. What would be better to disclose is if an employee has um, resigned whilst under investigation. Um, that is fact factually correct if, if that has happened in the chronology uh, and is a bit of a compromise between making the absolute judgment that somebody is guilty of gross misconduct when they haven't necessarily been present to defend themselves. So I hope that video has been helpful. If you do need any further support on this issue or indeed anything employment law generally, please do get in touch, visit the website chadricklawrence.co.uk or email employmenthub at chadlaw.co.uk. Thank you.